What's happening, Patreon? This is your girl, Megan, from the Hood Astro Queen, here today to do a reading on Miss Shikari Richardson. She's a runner. She's a track star. She gonna run away when it gets hot. <laughs> so, Shikari Richardson, for those of y'all who maybe have been hiding under a rock for the past few weeks or maybe for the past month or so, she's an American track and field sprinter who actually competes in the 100 and 200 meter races back in april of this year she actually ran a new personal best of 10.72 seconds becoming the sixth fastest woman of all time and the fourth fastest woman in american history so we're talking about breaking like really big records right and she got a lot of notoriety a lot of press however she's found her way back in the press but this time for a negative reason so as of recently she actually failed a drug test as she tested positive for marijuana and at this point it's been said that she is potentially going to be disqualified from participating in the olympics the next set of olympics and i know a lot of people are very upset about this specifically black people a lot of people have been just adamantly and vehemently speaking out against the whole concept of drug testing for marijuana as it does have very clear racial undertones however unpopular opinion okay she knew that like when you are participating in sports and parts of society that are going to naturally govern and be run off of certain rules and standards and things like that you know that you know that you know that so unfortunately the standards for black people are different especially when we start talking about athletes and things like that they are literally looked at through a magnifying glass and for every little thing every little infraction every little thing that could happen that could go wrong they will be put on the chopping block or all of their actions will be held up to society for everybody to scrutinize and dissect and pick apart and everything is going to be sensationalized whether you are fighting dogs whether you hitting your wife or your husband at home whether you're testing positive for marijuana these are things that unfortunately we have to consider i mean mm, the, the domestic violence tip, a little different, you know, different story. But you get my point, right? These are things that maybe other races of people can afford to do and still have their careers intact and opportunities intact, but not black people. Now, can we have a conversation about why this is while advocating and fighting to change those standards and improve society? Absolutely. But in the meantime and in between time, those people who are seeking to create a name or career for themselves in these avenues, this is the game you got to play. And so, although uh, I know a big reason behind this, you know, per a lot of her more recent interviews, Shakari Richardson has come out and said that her mother actually recently passed away, unfortunately. And this is what led to her actually using or smoking marijuana or whatever the case may be, which we'll get into it. <laughs> I don't necessarily believe that. I don't believe her mother passing was the only time she's used marijuana. Um, I actually think she's a regular weed smoker, which is fine. But once again, it brings us full circle to the point of, well, you got to pick. You got to pick. You got to pick. Do you want to smoke weed or do you want to be a runner, a track star? You want to run away when it gets hot. Which one? Um, so I empathize with her being a young woman having, you know, really un or unfortunate circumstances coming from a very unfortunate background. But unfortunately, life is not fair. And accountability has to be there. A lot of black people don't believe in that, which is a completely different video for a different day. But for now, we're going to get into her actual natal chart to kind of put this situation into a more astrological context. And of course, I'll give my commentary <laughs> throughout, okay? Per use, per use. So let's go ahead and get started. So Shikari was born March 25th in the year 2000 in Dallas, Texas. Her being born on the 25th, the number 25 breaks down to seven. That number seven is ruled by Neptune. And a lot of people with seven energy can be big time either addicts. So these are people who could develop a lot of different vices, whether it be alcohol whether it be weed, whether it be whatever it is, right? But I notice a lot of people 
who have issues with substances, drugs, and things like that, right, who have the spirit of addiction, can have very heavy seven energy, which is another reason why I don't think it's one of those things to where, you know, as soon as her mother passed, that was just the only time it ever crossed her mind to smoke. Um, you know, it was just something that she resorted to after her mother passed. And other than that, she was walking the straight and narrow. Uh, these are people who actually need crutches and can have a very difficult time coping with reality. So although, once again, is it probable that she smoked and the stress from her mother passing away led to her smoking? Absolutely. But I think what's not being said is aside from that, I think sis is like a regular smoker. That seven energy could also make her really big when it comes to hair, makeup, right? The number seven could deal with dressing up or being a person who could really enjoy the fantasy that goes into, you know, dressing up or putting on a beat face or that kind of thing. Um, and she has other things in her chart that reflect this as well, but her being a birth number seven could have a lot to do with her because every time I see her, she has lashes and that's a part of the magic, right? The number seven could even deal with magic. That's a part of her magic where she is just this beautiful round away girl who you know she'll do her eyebrows and lashes and things like that in a way that you will see a lot of other girls do everyday girls girls that you know so i just thought that was kind of cool now getting into her actual natal chart she has her son here at the fifth degree of aries which is the quintessential placement for a top athlete in fact with her aries son trining her leo north node this points towards her gaining and receiving a lot of attention by way of her athleticism her even being thrusted into the spotlight and with her aquarius south node i feel like she was someone who perhaps was not prepared for that a lot of aquarius south nodes either in past lives or in this life right early on in life can come from situations that are just very unexpected they can have a lot of unexpected situations that happen to them in life especially with her neptune conjoined to her south node um that deals with her being an orphan that deals with even just there being a lot of instability where these people may even need to develop coping mechanisms and things of that sort which could deal with once again whether it be drugs alcohol uh and things to, in order to like get by it could also deal with where she could even surround herself with people who engage in these things and they can be very impressionable when it comes to other people so maybe let's say she was someone who wanted to quit smoking for a while she could be surrounded by a lot of people who do that okay she could have a lot of friends who are more of a negative influence or friends and people who do certain things and she kind of just caved in because that's her natural mode of operation as a Leo North node, especially with that airy sun trying to your North node, not only do you have to be more of a leader, but there's going to be more on the line because you are someone where once again, you're going to be front and center. You're going to be the person who's gaining a lot of notoriety for a lot of your athleticism and your athletic accomplishments and achievements, you know, and as a result, it could also put these people in positions where they're going to be hated on a lot, where people can notice that about you, understand that, and then feel away, right? And even seek to sabotage you. Neptune conjoined to that Aquarius South Node could deal with where, I mean, she could have self-sabotaging behavior herself, especially with it squaring her Jupiter in Taurus, where this situation could have costed her money. Neptune is also squaring her Saturn at the 14th degree of Taurus. This could also cost her some opportunity and things like that. So I don't think she was prepared to be thrusted or pushed into her Leo North node as quickly and rapidly as she was. Also, with her son being at the fifth degree, that number five rules the press. It could also deal with like rapid movement right so her rapidly being thrusted into the press and you can look at that as a lot of the press and media coverage that she's received since winning that race also that neptune squaring her jupiter could be very indicative of her being somebody who may not be the most honest so that's another reason why i feel like she's not being very honest and forthcoming with the role that we maybe plays in her life 
Also, when you take into consideration that she has her Venus at the 15th degree of Pisces, conjoined to her Mercury at the 7th degree, that number 7 again, the 7th degree of uh, Pisces. She also has her Jupiter at the 7th degree. So the number 7 is reoccurring in her chart like quite a few times. So once again, reinforcing this theme of escapism and feeling the need to like uh, have certain vices and things like that. Mercury conjoined to Venus in Pisces can create a very addictive uh, mind or where people could, once again, lean on a lot of things to kind of help them cope and whatever the case may be. Her Mercury is also squaring her Sagittarius moon. That's also a very, very addictive personality or a person who can easily find themselves smoking, drinking, doing things in excess. They can't think clearly. Um, they need or they feel like they need certain crutches to rely on. Uh, so, you know, all around, I do see where this could have been a regular thing for her. Now, her Neptune conjoined to that Aquarius style note has a lot to do with her look her aesthetic, the colorful hair. This could be somebody who makes a lot of drastic changes to their appearance and they could be very experimental with it. So, you know, the natural tendency that she has to just show up with the colorful nails and, you know, all that good stuff is also indicated by that placement as well. Uh, in addition to her being gay, I think she's, I don't know if she's gay or bisexual but you know that Aquarius South Node is all about uh, the LGBTQ. A lot of these people can be on that spectrum. So that wasn't really that surprising either. Also having her airy sun forming a sextile to that Neptune in Aquarius could also be something that further reinforces her gaining so much attention for her striking aesthetic and makeup choices and hair choices and nail choices. It could also create the situation to where I'm seeing a lot of people, especially online, via social media uh neptune in aquarius is all about social media aquarius in and of itself is all about the internet um but where people are very sympathetic towards her and where a lot of people are like rallying in favor of her supporting her it could also even deal with where she could have some philanthropic tendencies i wouldn't be surprised if she started her own charity or nonprofit. Um, many athletes do, but with her, that could be a really big priority as well. Also, a part of that Neptune conjoined to her Aquarius South Note could have resulted in her not feeling that confident in her own capabilities, which is another reason why I feel like she really wasn't anticipating on setting the record that she set, which once again catapulted her into that Leo North Node energy. So once again, when you are... Uh, capable of or at least you know what you're capable of right all about that leo north note shining her airy sun knowing who she is being confident in her abilities knowing that i am the star i am the leader right i may not be able to do what everybody else is doing because i'm the leader this is what i do this is what i can contribute um a part of understanding that and knowing that is knowing that like you know you can't really sleep on yourself you know, that's, that's Neptune conjoined to her Aquarius style No, or you can't really do things that other people would do. So at the end of the day, I really think it's just a matter of that. But also I do like the fact that her son is trining her Sagittarius moon and Pluto. Um, a lot of Sagittarius moons can be very athletic as well. And with her moon conjoined to Pluto, it could deal with where maybe she inherited some of these talents and abilities from her mother. I read somewhere that her mother was very athletically inclined when she was younger. Um, now, that conjunction between the moon and Pluto could also even have been what led to her mother's death, passing. It could deal with where she may have been either in foster care, adoption, you know, especially with her Neptune also squaring Saturn and Jupiter, right, where there could have been some custody issues, legal disputes in terms of like maybe even child support or where she was going to stay. So I definitely get that kind of um, not really belonging and, you know, just having a life that could have been really hard, you know, even with her Venus and Mercury and Pisces square in her moon, you know, maybe she changed residences a lot. Maybe she was someone who was always going from here to there and there to over here. Um, Pluto being conjoined to that Sagittarius moon could also deal with where maybe her mother didn't even live with her at one point. Uh, it could also deal with where her grandmother, Pluto is the influence of the grandmother, 
could have been a, a you know a surrogate mother where the grandmother was a very prominent role in her life with that Sagittarius energy. I'm guessing the grandmother is very religious. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're very, very religious people. But uh, she also has Chiron conjoined to her moon as well. So it just reinforces her com coming from a very just dysfunctional place, right? Very, very dysfunctional place, very dysfunctional family. However, you know, moon conjoined to Chiron can deal with the person who could kind of feel like maybe they're the exception to the rules where they make a lot of excuses once again for their behavior, especially with this squaring Mercury. You know, I read somewhere where she was like, I'm just human. I'm just human. Yes, you are just human. But once again, you got to think about what's at stake, what type of human you are. You're a human who wants to participate in the Olympics. You're a human who wants to be a runner and a track star. So you got to act accordingly. She also has her Mars square in Neptune, and that could create a person who can get in their own way, a person who has a difficult time taking full responsibility and accountability. They can even be lazy, you know, or slack off if they're not careful. And although I'm not making this a thing about her, you know, work ethic, because um, the issue or question is, you know, her smoking. But the point is, I think her testing positive for marijuana is it symbolizes like a larger issue that she's going to have to learn how to come to terms with in order to reach her fullest potential is my point with her mars and taurus squaring neptune as well as her nodes she has to do a lot of uh self-esteem building you know these are people who may have a very difficult time understanding what they're worth who they are and what they're worth same thing even with her Saturn conjoined to Jupiter in Taurus. Lots of karmic lessons and challenges that are going to present themselves until she really fully understands who she is and, and learns her worth and is able to handle a lot of the curveballs that life throws at her, even with Saturn squaring Uranus with her Saturn and Taurus squaring Uranus at that, where it's like, you know, once again, you could be somebody who has the potential to be very consistent, a, a hard worker, somebody who, because you could even look at that Taurus energy as like conforming, right? Being the status quo. She could even be somebody who could naturally rebel and reject a lot of, you know, the traditional standards and the way things are. But, you know, it's going to be kind of difficult because, it's still in, in doing that you're still going to be selling yourself short she doesn't like rules she's not a rule follower even with her saturn forming a quincunx to her chiron and sagittarius you could look at that as her trying to find ways to go around you know doing what she do i don't know i even get the thought just intuitively of her trying to get somebody to give her pee and all kinds of stuff. And like I said, I mean, these things happen. Regular people do this on a regular everyday level. But when you realize that you're uh, striving for something greater or you have more at stake, you got to move differently. You know, another manifestation of that Aquarius South Node could be somebody who is a rebel or who, you know, is very hell bent in terms of doing things in a very non-traditional way. I shouldn't have to do this. I shouldn't have to do that. Right. And that is just automatically going to conflict with her Taurus Mars. Uh, and as I said it before, that Saturn and Jupiter and Taurus as well. Because in order for her to achieve a certain level of success, she's going to have to be a lot more straight laced and things like that. So until she fully gets the hang of that, she is going to be faced with lots of scandal. That can even be indicated with her Neptune uh, conjoined to that south node that aquarius south node scandal outrage especially considering that it's squaring her mars and her saturn and jupiter and whatnot right so she has to be very very careful with that that's a huge way where like i said she could self-sabotage she also has her son forming a semi-square to her uranus and that could exacerbate those issues in terms of her being hard-headed you know, willful and just unrelenting and not really wanting to conform and change and things like that. So hopefully she learns her lesson. Um, and yeah, y'all let me know what y'all think. Uh, drop down in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this whole scenario. And I'll holler at y'all later. Bye.